Good morning, Shagam second graders. It's Ms. Shilya. Today is Monday, June 8th, and I wanted to share a fun story with you. So today you're going to be working on author's purpose, and the purpose, the author's purpose of this story is to entertain. And I purposely picked this story because we are all stuck in quarantine still, in lockdown, and none of the beauty salons or barber shops or anything like that have opened. Now, some of you have been fortunate and you have been able to get some either home haircuts or know somebody that can cut your hair and come over and cut your hair. Um, but if you are like me and you have not been able to get a haircut in over three months and your hair just keeps growing and growing and growing and it's getting crazy, you are definitely going to appreciate this story today. And I've also chosen this story because the main character's name is Aiden Allen. And there's an Aiden in my class, and I know there's um, other Aidens in second grade, and I know there's an Allen in second grade, so how cool that your name is in a book, right? It might be spelled differently, but hey, it's your name, and I love that. That's awesome. So today, the author's purpose is to entertain. You're also going to learn that... Authors also write books to inform, to give you information, and to persuade you to either do or try or like something or not do or whatever. Um, but today's book is purely for entertainment, and I hope you find it as silly as I do. So, without further ado, here is Hair Apocalypse. <laughs> Hair Apocalypse, written by Jeff Herbach. Illustrated by Stephen Gilpin. Aidan Allen was a grubby kid. His clothes were always wrinkled, his shoes were always untied, and he always seemed to have grass stains on his knees. But none of that was the problem. The real problem was that Aidan Allen's hair was completely out of control. It wasn't just messy. It seemed to have a mind of its own. Lie down, hair! Why can't you behave? His hair seemed to move. His hair seemed to shrug. That is not possible, Aiden thought. Aiden reached into a drawer and pulled out his mom's big blue brush. When he brushed, the bristles immediately became tangled in his greasy locks. His hair seemed to be grabbing the brush. His hair spun the brush in a circle and then flung the brush into the toilet. This is not good. At the breakfast table, Dad looked up from his phone and shook his head in dismay. Aiden, your hair is crazy. You have to do something. I already tried, Aiden said. Better try again, Dad said. Just then, the school bus honked its horn in front of Aiden's house. There's just no time, Aiden said, as his hair grabbed his spoon and dumped his cereal on the floor. <laughs> on the bus, Aiden's hair tied itself into three bows. Aiden knew everyone was staring at him. He tried to pretend nothing was happening. But at school, Connolly Benton spotted Aiden and his crazy hair right away. It had formed airplane wings on the side of Aiden's head. There was no way Connolly would stay silent. Look at Aiden Allen's hair, she shouted. Stop doing this hair. But from that first bell on, his crazy hair did anything but stop. During art class, Aiden's hair grabbed some paintbrushes and splattered paint everywhere. Knock it off, hair! At lunch, Aiden's hair formed a giant, dangerous raptor that blew over Noah Foster's milk right onto his pants. Stupid, stupid hair! I know that's not a nice word, but it was written, so I read it. At recess, Aiden's hair turned into an octopus-like creature. It wrapped around Connolly Benton and her friends and yanked them into a nearby mud puddle. You're the worst hair in the world! 
After recess, Aidan felt defeated, and his hair was worse than ever. Telling his hair what to do wasn't working. Yelling at his hair wasn't working either. He took a big breath and talked to his hair. Why are you doing this? What do you want? Immediately, his hair formed into a magnificent mass of curls. Then it formed a long ponytail blowing in some imagined wind. Then it rose up into a great shiny mohawk. Then it fell into a flowing mullet. <laughs> so you want to be styled? No way! There has to be another way to make you happy, Aiden said. For a moment, there was silence. Then a bit of air moved through his hair. Wash me. On the bus ride home, Aiden and his hair discussed a plan to fix their issues. Aiden was exhausted. Clearly his hair was exhausted too. It lay lifeless and flat, looking even worse than usual. It's funny because I actually think his hair looks better than all the other pages, right? <laughs> That night, Aiden took a shower before his dad asked him to. He sang a song and sudsed up. Aiden and his hair had come to an agreement. Aiden would wash every weekday, but weekends were his days to be totally grubby. At the breakfast table the next morning, dad looked up from his phone and shook his head in amazement. Your hair looks fantastic. Thanks. Aiden replied, but your shirt is dirty and your shoelaces are untied, his dad said. I'm a grubby kid, dad. I'm doing the best I can right now. Gotcha, buddy, dad said. Then Aiden Allen and his hair headed to school, a little less grubby and a lot more confident. But take a good look at this picture, boys and girls. Because I think the next thing to act up for Aiden Allen are his shoelaces. They say, tie me. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that story. As you can see, it was clearly meant for entertainment purposes. <clears throat> Moving on with this week, I would like to share some other stories with you. But I also would like to give you some sneak peeks and, uh, peeks and some previews of other books that you might not know about. And I'm going to share just a little bit about them in the upcoming videos so that you can start building a summer reading list. I hope that some of these books will um, spike an in interest for a bunch of you. And I will be showing all different kind of books because I know we all have different likes and dislikes when it comes to reading. So I'm sure that some of the books that I show will hopefully pique your interest and you will be able to put together a really nice summer reading list to read over the summer. Anyway, have an absolutely magnificent day, boys and girls, and I will see you later. Bye. You disappeared.